obvious sense. There's a huge edge to be gained by looking into things like this. With the hype, it's only going one way. He's still too cheap. How can you not love fantasy football? Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Sanctuary. We are back. We are continuing the sophomore scrutiny series. I've got another killer guest for you today. I am joined by the creator and co-host of the Dicey Hot Seat, one third of the Fantasy Wildcard Dynasty show. He is, of course, Mags, as you may na- know him, at Hot Seat Mags on Twitter. Mags, how are you doing on this rather miserable, rainy, rainy Tuesday evening? Yeah, I mean, it is miserable outside here in the UK, but because, Rich, I'm, I'm on the Fantasy Sanctuary, if, you can't, if you're not watching on YouTube, I got my pineapple t-shirt on, I'm chilling in the beach in my hair. If only I had, like, a, a nice margarita or pina colada, that'd be awesome. That sounds sounds ideal. Maybe, maybe we'll try and get that organised for, for your next trip to the beach and uh, next good. trip to the sanctuary for sure. But uh, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on, Mags. It's, it's a delight to have you. Today, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at some sophomore wide receivers. We've done the quarterbacks yeah. and tight ends. We've done the running backs. Now it's the sexy position. Now it's the position everybody yes. cares about. Yeah, An incredible sophomore class. We saw some absolute stud breakouts as rookies. Three guys currently going in the top 12, Dynasty ADP. Max, how, how do you feel about this kind of, I guess, wide receiver class as a whole? Is it something that you're expecting more of going into year two? Or do you think they're going to struggle to kind of deliver on the hype, should we say? Oh, I mean, these guys have been so, and not just these guys, but maybe the couple of years before, they've been so good that it's actually kind of ruining it for like the 23 <laughs> class, like people going forward, because they've all just been absolutely crushing it. And for, at least in my head, two of these guys, I'm expecting them to go like even even further than the hype there is already. And then there's maybe some question marks about, about some others. But for me, two of these guys are absolutely locked in to be just like, superstars of the future um, i'm intrigued to hear hear which mm. two they are so we'll dive straight in the guy i love i'm a jets fan yeah. he was my wide receiver one in the class he he's absolutely balled out obviously got a new quarterback this year garrett wilson are you expecting even more going into year two do you think that link with rogers could could blow up and and lead to you know perennial wide receiver one seasons yeah, he's he's one of the guys, right? He's he's someone that, you know, even though we've seen like, you know, historically like excellent production from from Garrett Wilson coming out there, it was with Zach Wilson, it was with Joe Flacco, it was with Mike White and Chris was it Streveler? Streveler? You'll look better than Yeah, me, Streveler. Yeah. I mean, that's that's awful, right? And for him to produce like such high end numbers with that throwing the ball. I'm just so impressed with what he's done. He's going to go into next year. He's going to be Aaron Rodgers' number one target. Now, there is in my head a little bit of trepidation about, you know, Aaron Rodgers last year was not the Aaron Rodgers that, you know, we know and love and have come to expect, you know, MVP level things from. But I'm going to put that down to a blip. You have to. Aaron Rodgers has earned it. He's deserves enough respect for people to go, you know, what last year he had a down year. He'll be back to his his normal best next year. And and getting Garrett Wilson just I mean, I, I genuinely tried which to sit down and like see if I could find any red flags. I can't. I can't find any. Do you see any as a Jets fan? Like you're like, oh, he doesn't do this very well. Because I don't see anything. I think the I guess the one concern is that there's we'll come on to this with a couple of the other guys is that mm. he's a volume reliant receiver rather than a high value touches receiver and yeah that's not a bad thing because i think that you know there are some elite guys that have produced not seeing those deep targets not seeing those red zone looks and i think that he can still be a fancy star without that but he's not you know the likes of Christian Watson that's seeing deep shots and red zone looks. Um, I think that Garrett Wilson is reliant on seeing, you know, 150 targets next year in order to produce a wide receiver one season, which it's not a bad thing, but I think you just need to be aware that there will be games where that volume isn't, perhaps isn't there. You know, if the Jets get up early and Mm -hmm. and are just looking to run the clock out, he's probably going to struggle to see 10 targets. And and that's what he's yeah. going to need to be a fancy superstar, quite frankly. 
Yeah, it could be last year with the, like the quarterback play as well. Like he just wasn't getting like they were just weren't accurate enough to like hit him in those as those. I think his yards after the catch was was okay, not the best out of these guys. And one thing I really really liked actually was he had five wide receiver one finishes last year, and they all came four of them. Sorry, came in the last seven weeks. So he actually got better and better as as the year went on. And you know what? Weirdly enough, even though he had this great all time rookie wide receiver performance. This might be his floor, Rich. This might be like the lowest he finishes for the next couple of years, which I just love for Garrett Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, you touched on the quarterback issues. 57% yeah. catch rate last year. You'd expect that to tick up into the 60s with, you know, the the depth of target that he's going to receive, hopefully the quality of ball he's going to see from Rodgers. I think that, yeah. you know, as much as he saw 147 targets last year, it was only 83 receptions. You know, if he's seen 150 targets from Rodgers, hopefully he's, yeah. he's tickling close to that 100 reception mark. So, yeah, I love Garrett Wilson. I love him in startups. I think he's really difficult to acquire via trade. Um, you know, we've yeah. got on the screen there two firsts. I think you it's might struggle to get that get that done, to be honest. I think that people, yeah. you know, this is, this is the type of player that everybody wants in Dynasty, isn't it? An ascending, young wide receiver that you can build around for the next six to seven years and is already producing like a true fantasy star. So yeah, probably difficult to go out and, and say, yeah, go and buy Garrett Wilson. Cause I think he's potentially already unattainable. Would you agree? Yeah. You're not getting him for two. Like there's no, if you get Garrett Wilson for two first at hot sig bag, show me a screenshot. <laughs> Cause I want to join that league. Like I want in on that action because you're not, it's not, it's not working. If you want him, you're going to have to give up a Chris Olave, a Drake London, uh, like one of these high-end wide receivers on top of that because with those two firsts and you're just crossing your fingers and hoping you get someone almost as good as Garrett Wilson. And unless you're guaranteed us an early one next year and you get Marvin Harrison Jr., you're not going to replace Garrett Wilson with those firsts. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So you mentioned one of the guys there. The, the second guy we're going to talk about, it's really difficult to look at because if you look at any advanced statistic, whether it's targets per route run, whether it's, you know, uh, yards per route run, whether it's yeah. target share, whether it's a yard market share, this guy absolutely blows up. But last year, the Falcons, other than, <laughs> you know, the incredibly pass poor and run happy Chicago Bears, basically didn't throw the ball. So, yeah. Is it, are the advanced stats going to translate when the Falcons start throwing the ball? Are you somebody that thinks those numbers are going to expand and continue once the Falcons start throwing the ball more? Or, or do you think that their small sample size that will peter down and, and he'll probably kind of end up in a, a similar range as he did last year? Yeah, that, that target share one is what you see a lot for Drake London, isn't it? And that should have a giant asterisk next to it because that team last year ran the fourth most of any team has in the last decade. So <laughs> that is just, I mean, yeah, you, you get a target share, fair enough, but but it's not of it's not of a whole lot to go around. So I would kind of take that target share thing with a pinch of salt. Also, before week 11, he wasn't even leading that team in targets. Sure, that was Cal Pitts, and then he went down injured, and he was literally like the only guy that they were going to throw it to anyway. So I think there is a little bit of fool's goal with Drake London. He's got... I don't know why, Rich, I can't put my finger on it, but something's just telling me that ADP is way too high. And I don't, it's nothing I can find with the stats. It's not even anything I can really find in the highlight. I just, maybe it's the team thing. I just don't trust them to be able to deliver next year. I think they're going to really rely on Bijan Robinson. And yeah, I just can't put my finger on it with Drake London. Why I just think that ADP is not even slightly too high. I guess way too high. Yeah, and I, I can get it because you look at, as you said, those numbers, you look at he did a lot of it without Carl Pitts and you're sort of thinking those, okay, th those numbers are unsustainable. I think for me, I really believe in the talent this offense. I believe in Desmond Ridder, not necessarily that he's going to be an elite franchise quarterback, but I think that Marcus Mariota was so horrendous last year that Desmond Ridder is going to be an improvement. I think you've also got to look, if Atlanta go from where they were last year in terms of pass attempts per, per game to the league average. That's an yeah. extra 
nine attempts per game. That's that's mad. Okay. Yeah. That's that's an extra thirty three percent pass attempts that they attempted last year on top of that. Yeah. So yeah, he had a twenty nine percent target share last year, but I don't think he needs that if this offense is going to become more balanced, which I think it is. And I think that yeah, Bijan Robinson is an, an incredible running back. He's an absolute freak, um, a generational prospect, one hundred percent. But what makes him generational is the ability to be utilized all over the field. And I think that that's where people are going, oh, well, they've just drafted a running back in the first round. They're going to run the ball all the time. And it's like, Mm. no, I think that Arthur Smith is looking at this offense and it is, you know, the island of misfit toys. These guys are all movable pieces. You've got a tight end that is essentially an X receiver. You've got a big bodied X receiver who plays best out of the slot. You've got Bijan Robinson, who's a running back that can play best out of, out of the slot. You've got yeah. Cordero Patterson, that's a wide receiver turn running back, turn back into a wide receiver. You've even got Matt Collins, who's a big bodied guy that can go in and play out of the slot, that can play outside. I think that this offense is going to be fascinating because I think that anybody could line up anywhere in any, at any point. And I think that that's going to create a really interesting offense. I think they'll pass more. So, yeah, I, I I think I get what you're saying, but I think that Drake London is a buy right now and I think he's a value. He's my wide receiver 10. I, nice. I've i got him in a tier alongside the likes of Amon Ross and Brown and T Higgins. Yes, he's a tier below Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jalen Waddle, but in yeah. terms of value difference, it's, it's not much. We're probably talking a second between Drake London and those, those kind of other elite sophomore wide receivers. So, yeah, I, I really like London. Yes, there's a little bit more project, projection on him than Garrett yeah. Wilson, Chris Olave. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, but I, I, I may be sitting here in, in a year's time eating crow because it is a little bit scary when you're looking at those sort of small sample sizes. Definitely. Yeah, and it's just it's the quarterback thing that get like if Ritter doesn't like. I mean, you hear something like, "Oh, he'll get his quarterback. He get his quarterback," but then like some teams just never, never get their quarterback right. Like this doesn't doesn't happen. Look how long. Like the Bears have waited for a quarterback to play well for over what three years, or like the Browns or the Commanders, they just haven't got a guy that has really carried them forever, and that that could be happening with with the Falcons. Who knows? Although, if you want, if you want my hottest take, I've got for the show, Rich, it'll be I'm, the next year. Drake always. London, Drake London might be catching passes from Kyler Murray next year. What do you think about that? Oh, I quite like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, no, I, I could see that. I could see that. I don't know. I don't know if it would be the perfect fit with Arthur Smith. I think he prefers a slightly bigger bodied mm. quarterback. But yeah, no, I, th- I think, look, unless Ridder does something special with the amount they've invested on this offense, they can't just perpetually be in that sort of, yeah. oh yeah, next year we'll be there, next year we'll be there. So yeah, they're probably going to have to take a swing. And let's be honest, with that contract, I don't think everybody's talking as if the Cardinals are going to get an absolute haul for Kyler Murray. Unless they're eating a massive amount of that contract, I don't think they're going to be getting yeah. probably more than a first. I think if if a team's having to take on that whole contract, you're probably talking a second round pick at most for Kyler. So, yeah, I, I, I think that's a really interesting scenario. And mm. let's be honest, if Kyler's suddenly in Atlanta, the you know the the upside for all three of those superstars is uh, is going to be even better. Yeah. So, we've teased this guy a couple of times. We've mentioned his name, Chris Olave. Yeah absolute superstar in the making yeah what 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 do you make yeah this this is the second guy I mean I said at the start of the show there are two people that I think are just going to be like dynasty cornerstones for your team for the foreseeable future that's Garrett Wilson and that's and that's Chris Olave he had the fifth best ever yards per route run for a rookie ever I mean the other four people ahead of him were Odell Beckham Jr Edge Head Brown, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson. That is the kind of the realm that he is living in here with, with how well he did. And, and let's not forget like he had Andy Dalton as his quarterback for most of the year, which isn't isn't horrendous, but he's getting a huge upgrade. So just like with Garrett Wilson, we could have maybe just seen Chris Olave's floor here. And I had the same kind of issue that I had with Garrett Wilson. And I was trying to like try to find holes in the game, like I looked at what's his targets per route run. Oh, no, that's the fourth best ever for a rookie. It's like, <laughs> and then I thought, oh, well, maybe Michael Thomas coming back. And then I you know, had to kind of catch myself a little bit. So there's not a lot of 
lot of holes to pick at Chris Olave. I think he's going to have, you know, maybe even an even better season. And we've seen Derek Carr is able to, you know, carry wide receiver ones in his offense. So, yeah, Chris Olave for me is an absolute cornerstone. He's another guy. I mean, good luck buying him. I think he might be easier to buy than Garrett Wilson, but still not going to be easy at all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm in love with Chris Olave. I have, have been for a yeah. while. I think that the really exciting thing for me is that he's getting that quarterback upgrade. Yes, Michael Thomas might be coming back, but I think they're so such different receivers and they play such different yeah. roles. Don't see Michael Thomas impacting Chris Olave much. Um, yeah. You know, the, the exciting thing for Chris Olave compared to Garrett Wilson is there is a difference in the type of target they're seeing. You know, Chris Olave was a complete touchdown machine in college. Yes, mm. he only had three receiving touchdowns last year, and it's like, okay. That, that might take a little bit of time, but this whole offense struggled a little bit scoring touchdowns last year. So I expect some more touchdowns, but he was almost 40% of the Saints' A odds last year. Wow. You look at his A dot, it was 14.3. You compare that to Drake London at 9.8, Garrett Wilson at 10.3. Like, I know it doesn't sound much, but that extra four yards per target, yeah, that adds up. It's, it's a higher value quality of target and and that's where the points are going to come from so i think he's still going to see significant volume i don't think he's as volume reliant as garrett wilson but i think he's got the mm. same ceiling in terms of he could easily command the same volume as garrett wilson if that makes sense so yeah love chris olave love the quarterback upgrade i've got no concerns i mean he's a top well, he's my wide receiver six. So yeah, I've got him one spot behind Chris Olave, but I'm I'm very much all in on uh, mm. these three superstars in this class. I think it's it's really yeah. exciting. And I, if if you if you know if you can build around these guys for the next three, four, five years, I think it, it's it's hard not to be concerned. Are you? It is. It is hard. Sorry, Sorry, I, was, I said it, it is. It is hard though. So I I always find it. These guys are so hard to get in, especially if you're playing super flex, because their goal around the time that all these quarterbacks go, right? It's it's a real ballsy move, but but I love grabbing these guys as well. Is that is that something that you struggle with as well, Rich? I don't know. Sorry, I'm turning this around. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in a startup as we speak with um, 11 other dynasty analysts, and I've got the 101, so took my homes at one, was hoping that I'd be able to grab a couple of these young receivers in, in the 2-3 yeah. turn. Um, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave both went well before me, um in the second round and and it's like okay maybe i need to rethink this kind of thing and and i think that's it is that if you've got a guy that they're that valuable their second round startup picks in in superflex yeah. drafts and yeah there's there's a little bit of concern because you know w w these these guys have only been in the league one year but i think there's there's very little downside because of their ability yeah. to get open because of their ability to command targets yeah, the, I think the only thing that can stop them is injuries, and well, that's you can say that about every player in the league, can't you? So yeah, I'm I'm really excited about all, all three of these elite guys. I think that they're they're franchise cornerstones that you want to build around. Absolutely, um, it definitely feels like there's kind of the elite three, and then the rest of the yes. class. So agreed. Uh, so let's dive in before we get to the rest of that class, though. If you're here and you've not hit the thumbs up button, you've not hit that subscribe button. What's going on? What's going on? Do us a favor. Hit both right now. We have got so much more content coming. Tom is in the depths of best ball season. We've got some <laughs> incredible guests coming up. I'm just about to kick off my dynasty strategy series. We're going to be diving in some really, really interesting thought provoking guests with some really interesting thought provoking subjects. So hit the subscribe, do us a favor. You promise you, you will not miss it. I will regret it. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about the best of the rest. Okay. Jahan mm. Dotson. I feel like I'm banging my head against a brick wall. I am so much higher than consensus on him. <laughs> are, are you with, are you with me, Mags? Are you, are you a Dotson believer or, or are you someone that thinks that, that wide receiver 30 mark is is somewhat realistic. I think that's about about he about right. So he's someone I actually think might fall into the category is like a better NFL player than than dynasty player, maybe. And the end of it, I think he's really good and he does a great job for his team. But he it's a small sample size with Dotson, but everything he's done, I've been like, yeah, awesome. 
Like, why why wouldn't they continue to kind of use him a little bit more next year? Like, he only caught 35 passes last year, but, you know, seven of them were touchdowns. The, the thing for him, though, is he's got a lot to kind of work against. He's got Sam Howell as his quarterback. Who, who knows what's going to happen there? He's got Terry McLaurin as well. I know they're like different kind of receivers, but McLaurin's going to be the number one there. And I know, like, historically now we can say, you know, quite accurately that, you know, teams can carry two elite wide receivers. I'm just not sure he's at one of those teams. I really wish he played for somebody else, to be honest, because I think he is really, really talented and really good. The one thing that, that kind of stood out for me was he had a 10% drop rate. Does that worry you at all? No, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, sitting here as a Deontay Johnson believer, a truther, <laughs> if you will. Um, I don't, I'm not concerned about drops. I think that drops are overrated in the fantasy community. I think that I'd rather see a guy consistently get open, consistently get targeted. Um, yeah. And yeah, if he drops a few balls, it's, it's not the end of the world in my eyes. I think it's all about, you know, getting open and commanding that target share. My concern for Dotson is that there is an incredibly high reliance on high value touches. You see there yeah. 42% of his targets last year were considered high value. So that's a, a target of either 20 yards downfield or a touch yeah. or a touchdown. Um uh, sorry, a red zone target. So I think that he he kind of overproduced from a fantasy perspective based on the the target volumes he received. Um, but yeah, I, I love the talent. I think that he was a great prospect. I think he was forgotten about as that first round pick and people yeah. talked about the kind of first five guys, but actually to me, it was, it was that tier of six. And I think that he's a screaming value. He's my dynasty wide receiver 19 right now. Um, so yeah, shows how much higher than consensus I am. And yeah. I'm very happy to go and spend, you know, a 24 first to go and get him. I was happy trading anything of kind of, 107 later in this year's draft. I think that yeah. I'm not concerned about the Sam Howell thing because I think that to me, there's an, there's so few options in Washington that I think both he and Terry McLaurin can command a target share, even if it's from Sam Howell. I also do yeah. think that Jacob Brissett's probably going to start more games than Sam Howell this year. Um, yeah. And I think that, let's be honest we're probably talking about one year. I think Washington, they got new owners. I think they're going to be aggressive in, yeah. in going and getting a quarterback next off season. And yeah, if you're worried about a second year wide receiver because of who this quarterback is in this season, I think you're kind of playing dynasty wrong. Cause I think you need to be looking longer term than just right now would, would be my thoughts. But yeah. Yeah. yeah I think he's, he's like, if, if Dodson is my wide receiver three on my team, I am delighted, like absolutely thrilled. Because I think he's he's going to be somebody that will, I would say, start trending upward. Next, this time next year, I think people will be closer to your consensus than, than they are to, was it wide receiver 30 he's, he's ranked at the minute? Yeah, yeah, wide receiver yeah. 30, which, you know, it... He's, he's the type of player that could drop out. You know, we've seen that reliance on those high value touches. If he doesn't get the volume and he sees a reduction in that, he could easily fail to live up to what he did last year. But I just think that he's on the upward trajectory. You know, he didn't play a full season last year. I think give him a full season, get up to yeah. speed. I think he could really take over this offense. And yeah, I mean, I, I would 100% take him over, over Terry McLaurin straight up. The fact that Terry McLaurin still going over him in startups when you think Terry McLaurin's now 28. Yeah. That that's, you know, that's, that's scary to me because I wouldn't be shocked if Johan Dotson outproduced him this year, let alone next year kind of thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much Dotson over, over McLaurin. We're going to talk about another guy. He was, you know, very similarly drafted in the NFL draft to, to Johan Dotson, just yeah. a few picks uh, different. Somewhat of a challenging season. I think he definitely flashed mm. at times. Um, you know, you can see on the screen there a 70% contested catch rate, which is absolutely wild. You know, anything above 50% yeah. is impressive. But didn't put it together, didn't have a particularly great year. Um, struggled to kind of get on the field. Obviously, had the the breathing issues in training camp. I think it came out he was asthmatic and things like that. Yes. But yeah. 
Are you, do you think that Burks is is going to finally deliver on the hype, or are you uh, kind of cool the Jets kind of guy? You know what, I I was kind of a little bit unsure about him last season, but everything I've read, and I know you don't you don't trust things around this, this is lying season. Like you know, people will hype up everybody. But I don't know about you, but I'm reading nothing but glowing reviews about Traylon Burks. He's stayed, you know, near the practice facility in Tennessee. He's working really hard on things. He's trying to get his asthma under control. He's gotten much better shape. And he's really trying to become like this NFL professional football player. Not just a guy who likes to go out and catch balls and, and play a bit of football. He's really dedicating himself to becoming a professional. And with someone with the athletic profile that Traylon Burks has, and like you talked about, the flashes that he shows, if he starts taking this a lot more seriously, then he's like wheels up, I think, for Traylon Burks. I'm really looking into getting him wherever I can because I just think he is the, by far the number one target there. Because you look at, there is obviously Chico Conco, who is there, who, you know, everybody loves. There's Kyle Phillips, who, you know, only I love, but I still, I still love Kyle <laughs> Phillips. There's Nick westbrook Akina, who nobody loves. And then there's, I mean, the guy with the best name in the NFL, Racy McMath. Just seen that guy's name the other day, right? Racy McMath of the Tennessee Ad Titans. Advanced uh, stats superstar from college. I think his college dominator was like 40% or something st stupid like that. Love so yeah. It. Yeah. Absolutely love it. So that that's that's the competition. Traylon Burks is gonna like get the vast majority of these targets here. And now that he's in better shape, hopefully he won't have any injury concerns. He'll play the full season. Hopefully he'll have more than one touchdown and stays conscious after it as well. I just think it's yeah I think it's wheels up for him. There's no way what was what he going at wide receiver? What is that? 23. Sorry? Yeah, no no chance. He's, he's that low next year. I think he'll be way higher than that. I think he's got a big season coming up. Maybe not setting the world on fire, but the rookie season everyone thought he should have had, I think he might have this year. Yeah, I, I, I hate to disagree with you, Max, but I'm, I'm going to disagree. Um, I think that Traylon Burks, he, he falls into the my Calvin Johnson theory. Of, okay. I think people are constantly chasing six foot two plus, 220 pound mm. plus guys that run four, four, you know, 40s, those big, strong, fast guys that are, are, are basically going to be the Calvin Johnson. Mm -hmm. There is no statistical evidence that height, weight, speed have any impact on fantasy production. Yet, time and time again, the big fast guys get hyped up, and I yeah. can't get my head around it. If Traylon Burks was five foot ten, 200 pounds, nobody would be wanting to own him, and they'd be saying that last year was abysmal and you should be getting off him. It's just the hype around, and that's what happened. You know, going into the draft last year, he was the consensus wide receiver one before the draft in terms of fantasy. He then is the sixth wide receiver off the board. And yet he's still going as a top two, top three wide receiver in the draft ahead of Chris Olave, ahead of Garrett yeah. Wilson in some circumstances. And I just can't get my head around it. This guy had a really disappointing year last year. Yes, there are some flashes. You know, we saw some deep catches. I talked about the contested catch rate, but he was worse than Jahan Dotson last year in terms of production. Okay. I think he's in a worse situation than Jahan Dotson last year. He's He saw worse draft capital than Jahan Dotson last year. Yeah. And and yet he's going seven spots ahead of Jahan Dotson. And I just, you know, if you can give me, I would take Jahan Dotson straight up over Traylon Burks, but if you can give me Jahan Dotson in a second over Traylon Burks, I'm taking that all day. So, yeah, I, yeah. I think that Traylon Burks' range of outcomes is absolutely wild. You know, outside of those big elite three, if you would say to me there's a wide receiver here that could be top five, then, yeah, I'd probably say it's Traylon Burks because I, I get what you're saying. You know, there is some real talent in there. There is some physical attributes and there is an opportunity to command like 35% target share is within the range of outcomes for him. I just yeah. think that for me, the way I play, I kind of take physical attributes out of it and I'm looking at 
route run ability and you know ability to command targets and i think that there's still a real question mark there you know part of the reason that he had a 70 percent contested catch rate was because he couldn't get open and he had to rely on those contested catches so yeah um you know that that's my concerns but i do get what you're saying in terms of there is superstar talent there is superstar potential yeah. there um I guess for me, I'd, I'd just rather bet on a guy that I think could consistently get open than, than someone like Traylon Burks. Mm-hmm. We'll move on to another physical freak, shall we say? Another yeah. weight speed guy that can go downfield. Yep. Led the league in percentage of targets that were considered high value at 49.15%. Wow. No other wide receiver saw a high percentage of his targets either in the red zone or more than 20 yards downfield last year. Christian Watson, it feels like there's two camps, you're either in or you're out, and there's there's no ability yeah. to be in between. So, Mags, are you in or are you out? So I've had an interesting relationship with Christian Watson, right? He was a guy that before before the combine last year, before anything else, he was like, I put my tack in Christian Watson. I was like, this, this is my guy for this year. And then... That he ran that 40 and the hype blew up, and I was like, God damn it, I can't draft him. <laughs> like, I was, like, I was like, he's gone too high, he's gone way too high. Even, even for me, it was such a big believer because Christian Watson was always meant to be like an experiment, right? He wasn't someone that was meant to come in and like just be like a, a Garrett Wilson kind of guy, right? He was meant to come in and he might show big plays every now and again. And, you know, we expect him to come on stronger later. And that's kind of exactly what he did. So I'm going to I'm gonna keep myself in the in camp. But, you know, he is going for, you know, he's not, he's not cheap to acquire at all. So you're kind of relying on him really taking a huge step forward. I know that last year he came on really, really strong, but that was obviously with Aaron Rodgers. He's going to have to be Jordan Love's best friend. He's going to have to really rely on, you know, his yards after the catch, which is, you know, very good. And, you know, his superior athleticism, even though there's no link between his his speed and his size and, and fantasy production, I'm just hoping that they scheme him into opportunities where he can he can at least use that. And, yeah, he's got to be Jordan Love's best friend there. I don't know where else Love will be looking, first and foremost. So, you're going to hope that Love comes on strong and Watson is the guy that, gets on the end of most of those high value targets. But I don't think I don't think he's gonna see as many high value targets like you said, Rich. So he's gonna to have to make the most with, you know, less value targets and and yards after the catch and you know, trying to trying to make plays himself now, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I can't get my head round why there is a disparity between Christian Watson's valuation and Johan Dotson. Okay, let's mm. let's let's just play a little game of comparison, shall we, Max? Okay. Okay. So target share, Christian yeah. Watson fourteen point seven percent, Johan yeah. Dotson fifteen point one. Negligible. Okay. Yeah. Root participation. Okay, Johan Dotson eighty two point one percent, Christian Watson fifty two point eight. Now that's oh, wow. a big difference. Okay. Yeah, which leads to the second point. There is a massive difference in the advanced numbers of targets per route run, yards per route run. Christian Watson, twenty-four percent targets per route run, two point one yards per route run. Johan Dotson, sixteen percent targets per route run, one point three yards per route run. There's a big difference there. Yeah, but a big part of that is because Johan Dotson was on the field over eighty percent of the time running routes, whereas Christian Watson was basically said, "Okay, you you can go on and, and we'll get you the ball here." You know, he, he was mm. used similarly. ADOT, Johan Dotson 13.9, Christian Watson 13.1. Touchdown rate, Christian Watson 19.4, Johan Dotson 21.9. Aard market share, Christian Watson 23, Johan Dotson 25. PPR oh. points per game, Christian Watson 11.3, Johan Dotson 10.9. They've <laughs> basically had the exact same season, except... Christian Watson saw the field less and therefore his yeah. kind of per route run numbers are in my opinion inflated because he wasn't yeah. on the field all the time. Yet Christian Watson is going as the wide receiver 20, Johan Dotson's going as the wide receiver 30. 
Christian Watson was a second round pick. Johan Dotson was a first round pick. We've got serious questions over the the quarterback in both. You know, yes, Jordan yeah. Love was a first round pick compared to a fifth round pick for Sam Howe, but I don't think anybody can say wholeheartedly that Jordan Love's definitely going to be better for fantasy this year than Sam Howe. I think the competition argument is there. Okay, Johan Dotson's got Terry McLaurin, but outside of that, he's got nothing else. Christian yeah. Watson's got Romeo Dubs, who's apparently having a phenomenal camp. They've got Jaden Reed, who they've just drafted in the second round. They've got Luke Musgrave. They've got Tucker Craft, who they've just spent top 100 picks on. Like, I think the competition's there. I think the quarterback's similar. I think their profiles are similar. I think they're similar players. Yeah, I can get yeah. one 10 picks, 10 wide receiver picks later. I think that I've become a bit of a hater on Christian Watson because I think <laughs> that he's basically being overvalued because of yeah. two advanced numbers. And now those advanced numbers have a great history of kind of predicting success. But I think you've got to delve deeper. You've got to look into it. And also, let's not forget, he's seeing a massive downgrade at quarterback. Like Aaron Rodgers yeah. was terrible last year. But I still think Aaron Rodgers on what, you know, throwing with a broken thumb and, and you know, being Aaron Rodgers and a bit of a diva last year yeah. is still a, a better quarterback than potentially what we could see from Jordan Love. So, yeah, I've, as I said, I've, I've become a hater on Christian Watson, but I think it's more uh, a hater on his value. I think if he was going as, you know, wide sheep 30, wide sheep 35, I'd be screaming from the rooftops that I'm going to buy him. But yes, I just can't see a world where he's going ahead of Traylon Burks, where he's going ahead of Johan Dotson. You know, he, he's basically in the same category as Drake London. And to me, they are very, very different type yeah. of, uh, of prospects. Yeah, exactly. Like he is that, like I said, it's like he is meant to be this kind of rough edged kind of project player. Like, and he's he's not really being drafted as that, as you see. He's being drafted more as the finished article, which is, you know, maybe to his detriment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we, we talked about that reliance on high value touches. You can say that as a good thing. You can say that as a bad thing. But I wouldn't be shocked this year if Jaden Reed out targets him. I wouldn't be shocked this year if Romeo Dubs out targets him. Like, mm. I don't think we can pencil in that Christian Watson is going to lead the Packers in targets in 2023. Yet that's how people are projecting it, that he's the nailed on wide receiver one alpha, if you want to use that phrase. And again, it, it comes back to, you know, the, the Calvin Johnson theory, shall we say, because he's 6'4", 210 pounds and runs fast. Yeah. Like I think people obsess over those big fast guys and because he ticks that box he gets he gets buoyed in terms of his fantasy value so yeah that's 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 enough of my rant i feel like i've uh I've gone <laughs> on a bit too much about how much i dislike christian watson but it's it's the value <laughs> not the player the final guy we're going to talk about i mean his rise over a uh, rise and fall over the last six months has been wild yeah in december 2022, George Pickens was ranked as the 34th overall player in DLF ADP. Six months later, having not seen the field since that point, he is now the wide receiver 34. <laughs> can some can someone explain to me what's happened there? I, I just I just can't can't get my head around quite how he's managed to fall that that drastically in value. Are you yeah. a are you a Pickens believer or are you a a non-picking stand, shall we say? Right. So I think with Pickens, if you're like a statistics guy, you probably like just, you're not going to find what you're looking for probably with George Pickens because every statistic will tell you that doesn't look great. Oh, this isn't brilliant. That's not great. For him, if you're a Pickens guy, I think it's just because, man, he's cool, isn't he? Like, he's just, like, he's got, like, this kind of X factor to him. He's got this sort of aura, this kind of superstar kind of vibe to him where you just think this guy could blow up. Like, it could you just feel like you're waiting for it to happen? He is the extreme version of what I talked about earlier with Johan Dawson. I think he's going to be great for the Steelers. He'll play really well for them. But don't expect much for your fantasy team because I think he's a big play guy. He's very he's gonna be maybe very boom or bust. I wouldn't be relying on him as one of your main, you know, cornerstone pieces. He's still I think he's I don't know how far he has dropped, but I think he's still going ahead of his teammate Deontay Johnson, which I just find very strange. Yep. 
he's someone that you maybe want a share of, right? Just because you're like, all right, okay, I'll take I'll take George Pickens here, and just in case you know he does explode and and go off, but I just don't see him being your high value dynasty cornerstone player at all. But still love watching him play, love watching those catches, but don't really want him on my dynasty team at the price he's going at the minute. Yeah, I, I think your thoughts on George Pickens rely on what you think of Kenny Pickett because George Pickens yeah. has got a very clear defined role. You know, you look at the numbers last year, he was he had a higher root participation rate at 91% than any other rookie wide receiver. He had the highest ADOT of any of the, the seven guys that we're talking about here at 14.4%. Mm. We talked about... Traylon Burks' contested catch rate at 70% and how that's outrageous. Well, George Pickens was at 69.2. He had a yeah. 56% catch rate on balls of more than 20 yards downfield. Nobody else in this class was above 40%. Like, there's some really, really interesting stats there. But, and he is going to be that, that kind of deep threat X outside stretch the field receiver. Yeah. But it purely relies on, do you think Kenny Pickett is going to take the next step? Because in order for George Pickens to become a fancy star, Kenny Pickett needs to take the next step. Yeah. Now, I've said a few times, I'm a believer in Kenny Pickett. I think that Kenny Pickett showed me in the second half of last year that he took a step forward. And I think that nobody's talking about it because basically the Steelers weren't very interesting. They were at the playoffs and nobody wanted to talk about it. But I think he took a step in terms of his ability to process. Now, I don't think Kenny Pickett's ever going to be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, but I think yeah. he could be a solid, reliable starter that can spread the ball around on offense for the next five to 10 years. Yeah. And to me, that says that, that there's, there's the opportunity for George Pickens to be a, a reliable fantasy option. Now, when I say reliable, I probably need to pick my words carefully because I think that come the end of the season, you're going to look at George Pickens and he's probably going to be a wide receiver too over the next three, four years. I, I feel co that confidently in him as a player. But he is absolutely going to be boom bust. There are yeah. going to weeks where he's going to have, you know, five, six catches, 150 yards, two touchdowns. And then there'll be weeks where he'll have two catches for five yards or two catches for 15 yards. Like He's going to be boom bust. And then yeah. there's going to be Deontay Johnson, who's just going to be that steady, solid target volume underneath threat that's going to command 170 targets on the year and and kind of you know be a wide receiver too but probably not give you many boom weeks so i really like george pickens i think there's a lot to like i really like the value the fact that you know you can get in behind christian watson you can get in behind Traylon burks i would absolutely take him over both of those guys but you need to accept that he's not going to be able to produce week in week out for you and there is yeah. going to be definitely some up and down to the nature of his play, just because he's going to be, you know, that X outside receiver that's not going to be the target leader in his offense. We know that Jonte Johnson is going to see more targets, so there's definitely some risk in there. Are you, are you Johnson over Pickens still, Mags? Yeah, I would take the onto Johnson over Pickens just because of what you know you said. It, Neither of these guys are going to be my wide receiver one on my team if I'm doing things properly. They're hopefully not even going to be my wide receiver two. So my wide receiver three, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with having someone that will just get me that real steady workload, getting my points in. Like I'm not, I can't bust out anywhere really. I just want, want to have it so, solid and reliable. So I would take Deontay Johnson over George Pickens currently, but you don't you don't have to at the minute. Like he, I think Pickens is still going ahead of him, although I had not realized which how far he has dropped in value. I'm more intrigued now with Pickens that I'm seeing that his trade value is just a single first. I'm more intrigued yeah. now. Yeah. I think it's really interesting. We you know we we talked about the seven guys. There's obviously a few other guys in this class that we've not touched on, but yeah. you know that perhaps that's for another day. But I think it's it's the elite three and I think they're very much in a tier. I feel very safe and solid about those. And then there's that next four and I think if you ask anybody, Dotson, Burks, Watson, Pickens, they've probably got those four ranked in a different order. Yeah. And I think that we're going to be sat here in a year's time and there's probably two of those that are going to be 
you know, top 20 dynasty receivers and be kind of superstars. And there'll probably be two that are in that sort of 40 to 50 range and people are going, oh, maybe they can break out in their third year. And I, I don't know which two it's going to be. No. Like, it, I think it's literally going to be, that's a pocket of, of players. Two could be studs, two could be busts. Let's let's sit back and watch how it plays out over the next year. Exactly. It's going to be interesting though as well because the one thing that those four players have in common is they're all fun to watch as well. Exactly. That. And that's that's what we want at the end of the day. We all play fantasy yeah. because it's fun. Exactly. exactly. So thank you ever so much for jumping on, Mags. It's been awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you and uh, you're bringing the heat. Remind everybody as yeah. they're watching, as they're listening, where, where can they find you? Where can they find your work? Uh, yeah, so I do two main things. One, I'm the, the host of the Dynasty Hot Seat Show. Go check that out on YouTube uh, if you want to see more of me. I get great guests like Rich and like Tom and like a lot of other people on. So uh, we do a little bit of mock draft action. So come check that out. And also, I am one of the new hosts over at the Fantasy Wildcard Dynasty Show. Make sure you're checking that out as well. You can find all that stuff on Apple or Spotify or, or whatever you're listening to. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, that was great. No, beautiful. Thank you very much. And by all means, do go check out Mag's work. It is awesome. We're, we're huge fans of Mag's and his YouTube show. It was it was a, a big inspiration to Tom and I when when we kicked things off. So, uh, so yeah, if you're not subscribed to that, make sure you, uh, you sort that out and go and do so now. But yes. as I said, we've got plenty more content coming in the next few days and, uh, and we'll see you again soon.